All right. Looks like we are live. Welcome, everybody, to Standing for Truth. I am your host, Donnie. Oh, and I'm your co-host, Matt. Awesome. Um, I want to thank everybody for being here for tonight's epic event. Tonight, we have Dr. Kent Hoven and Jackson Rowe here who will be debating the important question, is there evidence for human evolution? Uh, Jackson, Kent, thank you so much for giving us your time for tonight's important debate. And if you're not yet subscribed, I wanted to remind everybody, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to check out the official website at standingfortruthministries.com. You can find it in the description box below with endless content and material. Awesome. I appreciate that. Matt, uh, let's break the ice here. Just one second. I hear slight feedback. Oh, uh, actually, Matt, I think it's coming from your end. Maybe just make sure that, um, yeah, it, well, it looked good there. Maybe uh, echo cancellation. Um, so yeah, let, let's kind of break the ice as we usually do. Get to know the debaters a little bit before we get into the opening statements. Again, Jackson, Kent, thanks for being here. Uh, why don't we start with, uh, let, let's start with you, Jackson. It's been a little while since you've been on the channel. Yeah. Uh, how you been? Uh, tell the audience a little bit about you and a little bit about your uh, your channel. All right, I'm, I'm good. I've been uh, looking forward to this for a long time. I've known about Kent for probably 14 years. So I'm excited to uh, meet him. I'm kind of a fan in a weird way. But uh, my channel's called the uh, Jackson Rowe Science Show. It just kind of rhymes. I haven't really been doing much on it lately, but after the debate, I'll make some kind of analysis of this debate, whether I win or lose, tie, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm into science, nature, photography, stuff like that. I'm trying to start a conservation organization. It's uh, I actually bought some land in Madagascar to help conserve some endangered lemurs. That's, that's what I've been up to recently. So uh, that's pretty much it about me. All right. I appreciate that, uh, Jackson. I appreciate that introduction again. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Kent, uh, thank you as well. A little bit about yourself, who you are, and how's everything going on at Dow? All right. Well, thank you for having me on again. My name is Kent Hovind. I've been a Baptist preacher 47 years. I taught high school science and math for 15 years. We're building a Christian camp and science center in Lenox, Alabama, population 35, uh, straight north of Pensacola, 70 miles. Come on down, visit. It's all free. We've had visitors from all over, 197 baptized in our lake. I believe the Bible is true, and evolution is the dumbest and most dangerous theory ever been come up with, ever. It's ridiculous to believe man came from a rock uh, and, and man's related to mosquitoes. I think that's dangerous to teach kids that. And so we, I've done a lot of debates on the topic of creation evolution. I just defend the Bible as being true as it's written. God made everything, everything in six days. All right. All right. I appreciate that intro. Uh, Kent, definitely ex excited for this debate again, uh, to the audience tonight's topic is, is there evidence for human evolution? And I'm going to go over the format real quick. So it's going to be a formal debate. We're going to be starting with 12 minute opening statements because Jackson is in the affirmative tonight. He will be starting. Then we're going to have up to eight minute rebuttals, then an open discussion, five minute closing statements. And then this is where we get you guys in the audience involved. Uh, we're going to have an audience Q&A. Make sure you're tagging me at Standing for Truth. Uh, me and Matt will both be gathering questions. And uh, as usual, I'm sure we will have a solid audience Q&A. So that being said, let's get right into this debate. Uh, we're going to hand it over to Jackson. Uh, Jackson, you have roughly 12 minutes. And uh, whatever time the debaters don't use during their openings and rebuttals, we'll just throw into the audience Q&A. So Jackson, just make sure you unmute yourself when you're good to go. And I'll start your timer. All right. I always forget about the unmute part. All right. Uh, so intro, is there evidence for human evolution? I think, yes, there is, obviously. Uh, just to get some stuff out of the way, I'm not going to talk about the past. We all have one. You know, I'm not going to use that against anybody as some kind of low blow. Uh, I think religion and science can be compatible. Uh, you know, most Christians do accept evolution. I, I myself am an atheist, but I don't uh, see any reason why you can't believe in both. 
also my points are pretty out of order i just wrote them down as i as i found them or thought of them so it's going to be kind of jumbled in the beginning uh, i'm going to focus on fossils genetics and anatomy primarily uh, i want to make it clear first of all that individuals don't evolve uh, populations do like one individual isn't just going to give birth into something totally different and evolution is not a linear process. It's not always clear where what evolved into what. Uh, it's more of a web or a tree. I'm also going to talk a lot about Australopithecines because uh, it's argued a lot by creationists that uh, they were just an extinct species of ape, which they are apes, but uh, they are in our lineage. It's argued that they uh, were not bipeds. There's even a statue at the Creation Museum of one on all fours that looks just like a chimp. And also Lucy is not the only one of those. There, there are many specimens, but that's the one that the Creationist Institute uh, tend to jump on. So first fossil evidence, it starts with Psilanthropus about seven million years ago. And uh, there's not much known about that one, but it's still probably in our lineage. Then Aurora and Tungensis about six to seven million years ago had the uh, femur structure suggesting that it walked upright, but it's, its fossils are pretty scant. Uh, then there's Artipithecus, Artipithecus cadava, and Artipithecus ramidus, ramidus being most complete. It had the uh, scalable structures that indicated it walked upright at least some of the time, probably not all the time. And uh, what I'm really gonna focus on are the Australopithecines for the fossil evidence, because uh, like I said, uh, you know, they focus on gospel to the scenes the most creationists. Uh, they argue it's just an ape, not related to us, walked on all fours. And again, Lucy's not the only one. Probably the most famous one should be the little foot fossil, which is an almost complete Australopithecus Prometheus. But most people don't even know it exists. So, uh, some of the skeletal structures of the Australopithecines that indicate they did walk upright were the ankle. The ankle bones were square shaped instead of uh, trapezoid shaped like a modern chimp. There's an adaptation for walking. The metatarsals indicate an arch and a stiff midfoot, unlike a modern chimpanzee or gorilla or anything, and more like a human. The spine was S shaped uh, instead of arch like a modern chimp. The rib cage was barrel shaped, as evidenced by the big man fossil specimen of Afarensis. Uh, instead of uh, cone shaped like a chimp, its pelvis was short and bowl shaped rather than elongated like a modern great ape, non human great ape. The femurs and knees also were angled in such a way to indicate bodyism. However, it should be robust. It's talking wrists like a modern chimp. And its skull was only about 100 cc uh, bigger brain capacity than a chimp. So uh, we'll go on to the earlier Homo genus. Uh, like Homo habilis, there's some debate about whether it should be an Australopithecine or not. Uh, most say it's in the Homo genus. It has just a slightly bigger brain capacity. And uh, from there, Homo erectus goes up. Homo neanderthalensis, which is not our ancestor, it's more of our cousin, but it had a bigger brain capacity. Uh, now, humans and apes share a few uh, key traits. We have the same number of bones, muscles, same number of teeth, several blood type systems in common. Uh, regions that code for protein in the, in the DNA are 99% similar. They can be interpreted differently as being about 80% similar, if they take the, the whole thing into account, as this, this channel's pointed out correctly, but uh, yeah, closer than any other animal in, in the animal kingdom. Uh, endogenous retroviruses, there are some, uh, I've seen this channel in particular try to try to uh, rationalize how these make sense, but endogenous retroviruses are when a virus infects a, like a sperm cell or an egg cell, it's, it's grafted into the genome and passed on to the offspring. We share 99.8% of those with chimps, which that really only makes sense if uh, we share a common ancestor. Diseases, we share many diseases with great apes, HIV being the most uh, obvious one, but there is also a 
two populations recently found with chimps that have leprosy lightly passed from humans. And behavioral, I won't touch much on that, but intelligence, uh, there have been several great apes that have learned sign language or learned to use a lexigram. They learn uh, hundreds or even thousands of symbols to communicate. Uh, Neanderthals, I'll talk more about those later. Now, if the creation story were uh, literally true, there are two genetic bottlenecks in our lineage, starting with Adam and Eve, and then again, 1,500,000 years later, or 2,000 years later, with uh, the Noah's flood, where there are only three pairs, Noah's sons and their wives. But genetics reveal only one major bottleneck in our history, and that's uh, about 50 to 100,000 years ago, where the population got down to a few thousand individuals. And Francis Collins, the doctor of the Human Genome Project, who was a Christian himself, said, uh, unfortunately, there's no evidence that we descended from Adam and Eve. Now, primate and human anatomy. Uh, tax taxonomically, we are primates. We have uh, flattened nails instead of claws. We have opposable thumbs and our fingerprints have, we have fingerprints. We have binocular vision with depth, depth perception. We have an eye sockets with a cup of bone supporting the eye. We have well-developed collarbones with high shoulder mobility. And uh, Meisner's corpuscles under the fingers. Touch receptors, which is a trait we share exclusively with primates. And uh, so that's just uh, basically the opening statement. Is there evidence for human evolution? Yes, there is. So I'll pass it over to, I don't know how much time that was, but I'll pass it over to Ken. I'm uh, stuck behind stage. I can't move you over. Sorry. Oh. Are <laughs> you there? there? Yeah, there are slideshows up. Okay, let me get the right slide number here. Uh, here, we, uh, sorry guys, I was on mute. Um, Jackson, let me just jump in here. We still got four minutes um, that we can throw into the um, either the discussion or the audience Q and A. So, I appreciate that, and we will hand it over to Dr. Hoven when uh, when you're ready. You have. 12 minutes. Okay, let's see. Alt DV965, enter. Mind showing? Oh, I got, okay, good. Well, thank you, uh, Jackson. I appreciate that. I think you are totally wrong on all those things. All those uh, evidences you gave are evidences for creation, evidences for a really smart designer. So I look forward to getting you uh, corrected and get over on the creation side. We need help over here. Okay. I think all these uh, so-called cavemen that they put out on screen and teach the kids in school is absolute baloney. None of this is science. There is no evidence that anybody has ever produced anything other than a human. No dogs produce anything but dogs. No cows produce anything but cows. For you to imagine that it happened long ago and far away is religion. It's not science. The Bible says, knowing this first, there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where's the promise of his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this, they willingly are ignorant. They're willingly ignorant of how God made the heavens. They're ignorant of the creation. They're ignorant of the flood. The world was overflowed with water, and they're ignorant of the coming judgment. So in my, my ministry, in my seminar, we focus on those three things, the creation, the flood, and the coming judgment. The creation is very clear in the scriptures anyway. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I don't know if Jackson believes that or not. But that's what it says. That's the first verse, and a whole lot of people, people believe that. Jesus said about that in John chapter 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. Same things were, uh, The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. So the Bible clearly teaches that Jesus is God, and Jesus made everything. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That would be Jesus Christ. So Colossians 1, by Him, that's Jesus, were all things created. So Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh, and he's the creator of everything. And Jesus said in Matthew 19, 4, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Talking about Adam and Eve. Jackson, do you believe that? Or was Jesus lying? Was he stupid? I, you say you, can't, you tend to believe both. I, I, I don't think you realize what a conflict you have there. 
Jesus said the creation of Adam was the beginning. Mark 10, 6. From the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. So Jesus said the beginning of the creation was when God made Adam and Eve. Since he's the one who did it, he ought to know. He's the one who was there. He was there when it happened. The Bible clearly teaches in Romans chapter 5, by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. Talking about Adam and Eve's sin. Why do we have death in the world? With your religion, Jackson, death brought man into the world. Death is actually the hero. Because if one species, if one ape or creature or whatever, ape-like creature, evolves a little better than the rest, the rest of them have to die. It's a, Evolution is a religion of death. The Bible says, by man came death. In Adam, all die. It could not be more clear, 1 Corinthians 15. So Adam's sin also affected the plants and the animals. It's clear from Genesis chapter 3. You can read all that on your own there. Okay. So Jesus said the beginning of the creation was when God made Adam and Eve. The Bible says nothing died until Adam sinned. Could not be more clear, okay? In six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is. The question is not what does it say? The question is, do you believe what it says? This is Exodus 20. God wrote that on a rock with his finger. God told Moses, he wrote it on a rock with his finger, handed the rock to Moses. Moses came down the mountain, got mad at the people and broke them, had to go back up and get more. This time God said, Moses, you write it. So he gave him the rock and Moses etched it into the rock. But either way, it's the same words. In six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. Do you believe that, Jackson? Did he make everything in heaven and earth, stars, everything in six days? Well, then there's no need for, there's no time and no need for evolution. Exodus 31, he repeated it. It's a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. In six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. So if your theory is true that man evolved from some kind of primate, then you're calling these verses a lie. Just so you're, you're welcome to do that. But I want you to be real clear and I want everybody else to see you are going directly against what God's word clearly teaches. Over and over in the Bible, it talks about the six days of creation. Six days, God made everything. It could not be more clear. First Corinthians, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The Bible is clear that Adam was the first man. And Genesis 3, Eve was the mother of all living. That's what it says. Now, do you believe it or not? If you choose not to believe it, that's fine. This is America, the land of the fee and the home of the slave. But you are welcome to believe whatever you want. However, I don't want you to make people think that you believe the Bible and you believe in human evolution. You cannot have both, Jackson. One of them is wrong, okay, wrong. Eve was the mother of all living. Jesus said the creation of Adam was the beginning. Was he lying? Bible says nothing died until man sinned. Is that true? Or do you believe that's wrong? Do we need you to interpret that book for us? Bible says we all came from Adam and Eve. Do you believe that? I do. And I'm not ashamed of that. Let us make man in our image. So God made man in his own image. That's what it says. Is God a chimp or an ape? So what about all these so-called cavemen that they teach our kids about in school? Is this grandpa? I got a huge collection of biology books right here. They teach that. Oh, yeah, we came from an ape-like ancestor. Is it possible for an ape-like creature to slowly turn to a human? Well, happened with Bill Clinton, but okay. So textbooks teach billions of years ago there was a big bang where nothing exploded and became everything. Nothing. Became a, then it cooled down and became a rock. Then those rocks it got rained on and turned into soup, and the soup came alive and slowly evolved into something like a primate, and then slowly became man. So here we are, way back here, 4.6 billion years ago. Actually, big bang was 13.772 as the, they get a new number every week, but uh, that's what they teach. And here we are up today, primates, man. I think people are welcome to believe this, but you need to clearly understand you are going directly against what God said in his word. If you choose not to believe it, that's fine for now. But someday every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father coming soon to a city near you, okay? Since by man came death. So did man bring death into the world or did death bring man into the world? Just because they can draw lines on paper connecting all these things does not mean anything, Jackson. Drawing lines on paper is not scientific evidence. Claiming that we have an ancestor that was single-celled and slowly became the cordatus and, and then eventually human, that's not science. All of the so-called cavemen that they talk about have been disproven. 
we could talk about the individual ones, but a much bigger picture I want people to see. Rather than take time talking about all these so-called cavemen, Australopithecus afarensis and Lucy and all this kind of stuff, the bigger picture is nobody ever sees any humans today produce babies that are other than human. Nobody ever sees monkeys produce babies that are other than monkeys. Nobody ever sees chimpanzees produce anything other than baby chimpanzees, orangutans, gorillas. It goes on and on. It's not observable. So for you to claim that we have some kind of common ancestor because they find similarities in the skulls or similarities in the bone structure, the hip structure, the wrist structure, stop. Why doesn't it happen today? It's never observed. Science, the word science comes from the Latin word seer, which means to know. What do we know? A more expanded definition is, what do we know based upon observation, experimentation, and testing? We know from a whole lot of observation that babies, uh, humans produce humans. That we, that's a lot of observation as, as verified. That's been an experiment that's been verified many times. Okay, I've verified it three times myself. I've got three kids. They were all human. So you can do the experiment yourself, Jackson. You'll, if you and your wife have a baby, it'll be a human. I'd bet you five bucks on that one. So, and if you get some pet chimpanzees, when they have babies, it'll be a chimpanzee. There is no evidence, none of anything other than that ever happening. So for you to rely on some kind of fossils, that's secondary evidence, very uh, uh, low quality evidence. First of all, no fossils would count for anything in a court of law. If you brought a fossil in and said, your honor, see this bone right here? This is evidence that it was, became a human. Any, any freshman law student could say, your honor, he found a bone in the dirt. You don't know that's the daddy of anybody. They say this one, he's the daddy of us all. Come on now. That's silly. You don't know it's the daddy of anybody. When you find bones in the dirt, really all you know is it died. You don't know it had any children. You sure don't know it had children that lived. And you really don't know it had children that were different. No animal today produces children that are different. Why do you think it can happen from a bone in the dirt? This is not science. Evolution, the belief in that it came from an ape-like ancestor, is not part of science. It's part of a religious belief, a worldview. You're welcome to have that. But stop calling it science, and certainly stop requiring all the kids to learn that. Smithsonian did an article. This is the mother of us all mammals. You don't know that's the mother of anybody, first of all. If you find a bone in the dirt, you know it died. End of story. Could you prove those bones had any children that lived? No. You don't know it had any kids. You don't know it had any kids that lived. That's for sure. You can't prove it had kids that lived and reproduced. You don't know that it produced kids that were different than itself. Why do evolutionists claim some bone in the dirt can do something that no animal today can do? Not one living species of anything can do what you guys are claiming. Produce something other than its kind. So they will quickly run, I'm, I'm sure Jackson will too, run behind, well, it takes millions of years. Oh, so in other words, so we don't observe it. Therefore, it's not science. We don't observe it. It's not, it's not observable scientific. And so believe that if you, if you want. Every farmer in history will tell you that cows produce cows and corn produces corn. There are no exceptions. None, zero, zip, nada. It doesn't happen. Now, they want to talk about cavemen. Well, it depends what you mean by a caveman. Many people today live in caves. Osama bin Laden, the world's most wanted caveman. There's a former caveman. They finally got him, I think. There's people today living in caves. That's not proof of anything. It's all over the world this way. Someone's trying to make a monkey out of you. National pornographic or geographic. Uh, this is all pure baloney. Humans should talk like chimps. Oh, that'd be brilliant. Why don't you all go to school? Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, everybody think you're sharp, won't they? Yep. Society of London is looking for volunteers to talk chimp in their everyday work and hall to test the theory. One minute. Society of London. I, I think going around talking like chimps. Do they poop in the street too? I mean, chimps will do that, you know. Come on, guys. One part of the survey recommends waving your arms, brandishing objects, and making yourself appear larger to assert authority over others. You got to be kidding. BBC News. 15 years ago, I doubt they outgrew it. Let's see. Hello, a simple hello when greeting friends should be replaced with an extended and throaty <laughs> pant. All these so-called kids, none of them count, Jackson. None of you can go ahead and talk about all your similarities between these different cavemen. I'm telling you, from a much larger perspective, none of them count. 
their bones in the dirt. You don't know they had any kids. Show it to show me hap, show me where it's happening today. I want to see that. Now that would be science. Go ahead, Jackson. All right. Perfect timing. I appreciate that opening statement, Dr. Hoven. I appreciate the opening statements from the both of you. We're now moving into the uh, the rebuttal round. We've got up to eight minutes, but just like uh, the opening statement, Jackson, whatever you don't use, um, we will just throw into either the discussion or the audience Q&A. Also, to the audience, thank you so much. Either tag myself or Matt. Matt is the one gathering all the questions right now. Uh, we've already got a ton of questions coming in, so this is definitely going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, Jackson, I'm going to hand it over to, to you. Um, I was going to mention there was a slight humming noise during your opening statement, but I'm not hearing it right now. So I think you might have dealt with it. Um, yeah, I think it's the fan on the laptop. Okay. Um, I don't hear it anymore. So everything sounds yeah. good, Jackson. Whenever you're, re you're ready, you got up to eight minutes. All right. You mentioned a lot of uh, things like dogs only give birth to dogs and humans only give birth to humans. And well, of course they do. No one's arguing they don't. That's not what evolution is teaching. And I, I think you know that, surely. Uh, talked about the flood. There's no real direct evidence of the global flood, recent flood. Uh, Adam and Eve, uh, Jesus talked about Adam and Eve, and sure, he did, but he could have been speaking about the allegory about Adam and Eve, not necessarily the literal interpretation of Adam and Eve, so you can still believe in both. Uh, now, you talked about Bible verses, all those Bible verses, I think they can be allegorical, and still evolution can be true, and there can still be a God and even a Jesus. Now, uh, let me see. It's hard to read my hand right. Uh, Ape-like creature into a human. Uh, yeah, not in one generation. It doesn't just happen overnight or in one generation. Of course, a human is not going to give birth to something totally different. It takes uh, millions of years. That's what evolution teaches. That's why there's such a long time frame. Uh, slight changes over generations add up to big changes when you look down the line. One person speaking Latin didn't give birth to a person speaking Spanish, you know. I think you're, you're doing a lot of oversimplifications. Uh, you're talking about the links of lines on paper. So those lines on paper are linked by uh, fossils and genetics, not just some guy drawing it. And you talked about disproven ape man, but you didn't really go into it. I, I'm assuming you're talking about like Nebraska man and Piltdown man, which were disproven by science themselves. Uh, things like Lucy, the big man, Littlefoot, those fossil specimens, they haven't been disproven or discredited in any way. Uh, again, it's hard for me to read my handwriting. Give me a second. Uh, you talked about fossils and bones in the court of law. Well, how do murder cases happen then? I mean, uh, you find bones, you infer how those bones passed away by what you find on the bones. You can determine the sex of the victim. You can look at the DNA sometimes, not often with fossils, but so in a court of law, of course you use bones. Uh, I think you're deliberately misrepresenting what evolution teaches here. Uh, I don't think you're doing it to be a bad guy or anything. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. But uh, basically there wasn't, it was, that was more of a theological uh, point of view, and I don't have too much to say about that, so that's basically my rebuttal. Probably shorter than the time allotted, but anyway, that's about it. No worries, Jackson. You take what you need to. That's why we give you a maximum time frame as compared to, you know, something that you have to utilize all of. Uh, that way, we'll just, uh, let me see how much you used. So, we got about another four minutes that we can throw into um Either what we'll do is we'll throw two two minutes into the discussion, two minutes into the audience Q and A because the audience Q and A is uh, always a lot of fun. So that being said, we're going to hand it over to uh, Dr. Hoven now. Dr. Hoven, you have eight minutes, and whenever you're ready, go ahead. Well, thank you. Uh, I would uh, you, uh, you I mentioned that dogs produce dogs, and you said of course dogs produce dogs. Uh, do you believe at some time in the past? At some point, the dog came from something that was non-dog. I mean, the lines on paper show uh, actually a single-celled ancestor, 
turning into what eventually would be the, you know, those with the backbone, which include the dog. So at some point in your religion, I'm sorry, in your theory, you would have to say that a non-dog produced a dog. And you said it took millions of years. Oh, that's, that's not science. It's not observable. That's my point. You guys can believe this all you want, but it's not science. You don't get it. It's part of a religion. So the secret of how life on earth began. Today, life has conquered every square inch of earth. But when the planet formed, it was a dead rock. How did life get started? Well, that's a fair question. Now, this debate tonight is just about the so-called common ancestors of humans. Did man evolve? And again, drawing lines on paper between all these creatures claiming they're connected is not science. You said something about the bones. They can tell when they find bones of a murder victim, whether it was male or female, and et cetera, about approximate age. Well, that wasn't my question. My question was, can you from the bones tell it had any children? And can you tell it had children that were different than itself? From the bones, could you tell this animal produced something that was different than what itself was, whether it be human or chimp or ape or something like that? So arranging bones on, in, on, on a shelf is, is not evidence either of anything, OK? It's just a matter of you know good organization skills, arranging things. We've got copies of most of the uh, replicas of the so-called uh, ancestors here. I'm telling you, all of them are either fully ape or fully human. There is no such thing as anything in between. Let me get up to where I wanted to get. Uh, hang on right here. Nope. Uh, all right. There. Neanderthal man, for an example. Okay. You said some had not been disproven. I didn't I see 1031. Alt DV 1030. Okay. On my video number two of my seminar series, which is 18 hours, you can get for 50 bucks, and then you can return it and get your money back. I used to loan stuff out. I quickly learned Baptists don't steal, but they do borrow and never return. So buy it, and then you can get your money back when you return it. So they have all these so-called cavemen, Homo sapien, uh, Homo erectus, uh, 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 Homo habilis, lined up on uh, for textbook. This is the stuff we're teaching the kids in school. I resent that. It's not science. It's a religious belief. This stuff ought to go in a private school where you want to teach kids that monkeys. Uh, they, they say the brain was bigger. So I think it proved they live longer. And we could take each one of the cavemen if you'd like. But the bigger point is, Jackson, none of the cavemen would count. None of the bones would count in an honest court of law to find out, could they produce children that were different than themselves? Could you tell from the bone whether it was male or female? Possibly. Certainly from the hip bone, you can tell that. But I don't know about the finger bone. Maybe you can. Uh, so uh, the, the so-called Neanderthals, they say they had a bigger brow ridge. What does that mean? Homo a sapien came from Neanderthal. Well, let's see. Neanderthals. What does it mean to be human? I got a ton of stuff on that. Itchy eyes, sneezing, may blame the allergy on Neanderthals. And they draw these pictures like they have the bigger brow ridge. Well, the Bible says before the flood came, the people lived to be 900 years old, average 912. After the flood, it dropped off to 400 years and then down to 200. And today, hardly anybody makes it to 100. Well, the fact is, a simple anatomy course would tell you, your brow ridge never stops growing. As you chew, the masseter muscle and the temporalis muscle and the frontalis muscle pull on the brow ridge just from the chewing action. So if you're chewing, any bodybuilder will tell you when you use a muscle a lot, it builds bigger bone. The muscle pulling on the bone stimulates bone growth. So chewing for a long time would stimulate bigger brow ridge. So if somebody's living to be eight or 900, they get a bigger brow ridge. It has nothing to do with being Neanderthal or ape-like or anything else. They just, they lived a long time. This guy sent me his picture. He said, Brother Hoven, look at me. I'm Neanderthal, and I love your videos. So here's a Christian uh, Neanderthal man. He's still alive in Philadelphia, by the way. How about David Harbour? Is he Neanderthal with a big brow ridge? Is he half human, half ape, or is he fully human? 20 physical traits you might have inherited from Neanderthal. The hump on the back of the skull, the occipital bun. Well, that's when you bend over and pull yourself up, the muscles on the back of your neck, sternocleidomastoid, et cetera, they pull on your head, your, your skull. Of course, it's going to elongate after a while. These muscles are what's pulling your head back up when you bend over. So again, if you live to be 900, you'd have bigger brow ridge, brow ridge on the front and bigger occipital bun on the back. The bones senses these small changes and can grow dramatically. In the months after starting exercise, in order to reduce the risk of breaking near the joints, bones get bigger and more dense where bone shafts tend to get bigger and thicker with little change in body density. Hmm. The brow ridge never stops growing. 
So just finding one like this indicates it probably a human living to be 200 or 300 or 500. That's all. Pronounced brow ridge is a common feature among Paleolithic humans. Early modern people, such as those from the finds of someplace here, had thick, large brow ridges, but they differ from those of archaic humans, like Neanderthals, have a suborbital foramen or notch, so forming a groove through the ridge of each eye, above each eye. So you can read all about this. It's not evidence of anything. Here's a soccer player, got a pretty good sized brow ridge. How about that guy? Does that prove he's half human, half ape? How about this guy or this guy? Raising eyebrows, how evolution gave us expressive faces. These guys are desperate. So I think, Jackson, I'd like you to try to see, first of all, the little bones that we find with slight differences from ours is not evidence that they're related to us at all. And there, is, there are no examples in, in recorded history of all the farmers in the world who crossbreed cows. They'll all tell you they get a cow. How many seeds have been planted over the last 4,000 years, either by humans or by nature? I mean, just the grass produces billions of seeds. They blow around they, and, and they grow into grass. There are simply no examples of any plant or animal ever producing anything other than its kind. Now, if you wish to believe that, that's fine. But Jackson, your position is directly against all the observed scientific, ev scientific evidence, and it is certainly against the clear teaching of Scripture. And for you to claim that Adam, Jesus saying Adam and Eve were just an allegory, that's your religious belief, but that's not what the scripture clearly teaches. Jesus said the creation of Adam was the beginning. Was it or wasn't it? Bible says nothing died till Adam sinned. Is that true? In your religion, a bunch of people have to die in order for this evolution to work. If one creature evolves a little better than the rest, the rest of them got to die or else the new improved gene gets blended back into the population. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's, I think it's wicked to teach kids evolution. I think you're wrong. Anyway, go ahead. All right, uh, gentlemen, that concludes the opening statements and the rebuttals. Uh, now we are moving into the open discussion. As always on this channel, uh, we prefer to keep these discussions civil, professional, equally timed, and of course, discussing one topic at a time. Uh, before I hand it to Jackson, uh, since Kent just ended his rebuttal, Jackson, we'll let you start the discussion off. Maybe there's a couple points you wanted to make, followed up by a question. Uh, but before I hand it to you, uh, logical, plausible, probable John Maddox, he sent in a few super chats. I appreciate it, brother. Uh, he is having an after show. So as soon as this uh, debate is over, everybody in the chat, head on over to uh, John's channel. We've got about 300 people in the chat uh, enjoying this epic, epic debate. So that being said, Jackson, Kent, the floor is yours. All right. So you mentioned the beginning of life, and that's not really what we're debating here. And it really doesn't have too much to do with evolution, really. Uh, because God could have produced the, the first cell and evolution could still have happened. Uh, now, you said fully ape and fully human. That doesn't really make any sense from a, like a genetic or an anatomy point of view. We're, we're still fully ape. Uh, we just have a bit more uh, advanced features than some of the other great apes. But uh, right, so what, what, One topic at a time. Which, which one, you, which oh, one are you supposed to be talking about? You already gave your statement. Now, which which one topic do you want to ask me about? Oh, I'll just ask. I guess I'll just ask a question. Uh, what what evidence would change your mind? Do you think? Well, the truth. I, I'm I'm open for the truth. The truth is, all we ever see is humans produce humans. So that would lead me to the conclusion that humans have always come from humans. Going forward, we know it'll always be humans. Going backward, I think it's logical to say it must have always been humans going backwards which means there must have been a beginning human, Adam and Eve. So you don't have to have, I mean, what would change your mind about two plus two equals four? What, what, what evidence can I give you that would change your mind about that? Well, about two plus two equals four, nothing would change my mind. But if uh, someone go. found- I'm not changing your mind either. Okay, well, listen, if you found a fossil no of a human in Cambrian era rock, that would change my mind pretty quick. Well, in your, do you believe uh, and the chimpanzees are ape-like creatures that we came from, had an ancestor before that. 
according to the textbooks, yeah. it'll say, you know, if you just remember the word farm, F-A-R-M, fish became amphibians, became reptiles, became mammals. Fish, amphibian, reptile, mammal. Do you believe that theory? Well, it's not that simple. I mean, it kind of is a branch. It's not a linear process, and it's not really a... I mean, there are a lot of fossils that show the, like, the land, sea-to-land transition. There's uh, Alpistostegi, which was unveiled not long ago. Tigtalic, of course, which is the one major one that people know about. There's Acanthostega, Ichthyostega. I mean, there there's a series of fossils for every line of tra major transitions that we know about. So, hang on now. Fossils show a series of transitions. That would only be because somebody arranged them in that order. Uh, the fossils don't talk. I think we'd agree with that and the fossils don't reproduce. So you're going to have to put your interpretation on them. Arranging things in order does not prove relationship. Arranging a unicycle to a bicycle to a tricycle to a quad runner does not prove anything. Go from one wheel to two wheel to three wheel to four wheel. So each one is independently designed. So all of these, that's what I'm trying to get across. All of these fossils you're talking about would be thrown out of any honest court of law. You'd say, you don't know they had any children. We don't see anything today producing other than their kind. Why do you think these bones could do it? Well, the bones obviously didn't reproduce at all, but uh, they're arranged by where they were found in the strata, uh, the age of, of the bones, of the fossils, not just by, well, this one looks like it's turning into this. It's not that simple. Uh, and there was a, a trial like this, the Dover trial, and creationism lost pretty badly. I think if I recall, the Dover trial was simply to say, should creation be taught in public schools? Uh, and I think they demonstrated, no, creation is a religious belief. I would agree. Should evolution be taught in public schools? No, because evolution is also a religious belief. The bigger question is, should we even have public schools? Should, should every parent teach their own kids or should churches have their own schools or something? But if we're going to have public schools, they shouldn't teach one religion over another, but that's what they're doing. They're teaching the evolution religion over everything else. I think that's wicked. I think that's wrong. I think it ought to be stopped. So uh, you mentioned, uh, uh, let's see, the fossils were, date, were arranged by their, by their age and the strata. Uh, the, all of the layers of the earth are the same age. Every speck of dirt on the planet's the same age, unless it came from an asteroid or something, and there's very little of that on the planet. Uh, all of the layers, there's no such thing as a geologic column. The whole thing's a joke. If you shuffle a deck of cards, is the top card younger? If you shake a jar of dirt, it'll settle up into gravel, sand, clay every time. It'll, the shaking and sorting of the, of the fossils, the fossils might be arranged based upon their intelligence or based upon their habitat. You know, clams are found at the bottom because they're already at the bottom when the flood starts. Of course, they're buried first. Birds are found at the top because birds are the last ones to drown in a flood. The fact that clams are here and birds are here does not prove clams turn to birds. It proves that birds can fly around till they run out of gas and then they get buried. Of course, they're on top of the clams. You guys just don't get it. You, you trust that stupid geologic column. It doesn't exist anywhere on the planet except in their imagination. It, it's not science. So to, find, to say they arrange these, these so-called missing links that you're talking about, putting things in some kind of order that you've already decided it must have happened, that's prejudice. It's not science. We never see any of these fossils that you're talking about. They're not alive today. We can't test it. We can't demonstrate it. You can't show them producing anything other than their kind. Why do you want to believe it happened? I guess I might be, I'd like to ask you a separate question, but why do you want to believe this, Jackson? Is there, are you running from God's word for some reason? Or? Well, of course I'm not running from it. I'm, uh, just, that's what the evidence seems to show. And uh, you say the geologic column doesn't exist anywhere on Earth. Is that right? That's correct. It is, it's in the textbook. It's right. in the place it exists. Well, from Precambrian to present, there's nowhere where it lines up like that anywhere? There's no such thing as Precambrian. All well, of those names they give them, Jurassic, Triassic, Mississippian, Devonian, Silurian, it doesn't exist. It's all baloney. They're layers of rock. 
Right. Somebody put their name on them and somebody put a date on them. I don't think the rock cares what we call it or how old it is. The, the, this geologic column does not exist. Right. Okay. You're saying it literally doesn't exist anywhere or it doesn't exist. Oh, I'm not saying it doesn't the earth does have lots of layers. No question. We got them right here in our gravel pit in Alabama. Okay. But I'm saying they're not different ages and those names they put on them are meaningless. There's no such thing as a Jurassic period. All of those layers were formed in one big flood in the days of Noah, or nearly all of them. Some layers form today, but I'd say, I'll give it a pick a number, say 95% of the layers of the earth were made in Noah's flood in one year. By the tide coming up and down and rushing back and forth, up, down, up, down, back, forth, Noah was in the ark for 880 tidal changes. And if you get a liquid-covered planet like during Noah's flood, the tide becomes harmonic. It'll go up and down 200 feet instead of going up and down five feet like the tide does today. So the water's got to rush in to fill that bump. Google experiments in stratification by Guy Both Berthold or something. It's a French name. Uh, he, does, he shows it happening. When the, layer, when the water's moving sideways, it'll, move, it'll make six or eight or ten layers at the same time. The layers form this way, not this way. I'm sorry you were taught that the layers form this way. That's just logical nonsense. If the layers are forming this way, Where's this material coming from? Go ahead. Well, there are uh, several places on Earth where the complete geologic column is are, are found. Uh, Tunisian Basin, the Oman Interior Basin, uh, there's a Gandamese Basin in Libya. There are about 20 more. But uh, oh, no, no, wait a minute, no, Jackson. There are several places on Earth where the layers are in the same age that they put in the book that they claim is a geologic column. Again, you can't. The, well, the, the rocks in those layers aren't talking, and you cannot prove. No, and the layers are nice, but, neatly stacked uh, like pancakes. There's no erosion marks between them. All those layers formed in one year. Well, it's just a strange coincidence. I know you don't, you, you guys don't give much much credence to radiometric dating, but the bottom layers do, yeah. come out older, and it goes steadily younger as you go up, and and. You know, there are multiple who dating. Taught, who, taught, who taught you that? Well, I've, I've seen it in many places that uh, okay. you don't give much credence to uh, to uh, radiometric dating. Well, I understand how it works pretty well, whether you want to talk carbon-14, carbon-13, potassium, argon, rubidium, strontium. We can talk about any one you'd like. I'm pretty versed on those. But all of the radioactive dating methods are based on some real obvious assumptions. If you walked into a room and found a candle burning on the table and I asked you, when was it lit? How long has the candle been burning? All you really could tell me scientifically is the current height of the candle and the current rate of burn. Let's suppose it's seven inches tall and it's burning an inch an hour. I got two scientific facts. It is seven inches tall. It's burning an inch an hour. We could all agree on that. Now, when was it lit? Well, now we got to go into some assumptions. How tall was it? Has it always burned at the same rate? Has there been any draft in the room that changed this thing? Was the candle skinnier and burned faster? We don't know. So radiometric dating, we can find a rock. We can determine the amount of potassium or the amount of carbon-14 or rubidium or strontium, whichever element you want to use. Yes, they can determine that pretty accurately. I don't argue with that. And they can determine how fast it decays. I don't argue with that. There's your two facts about the candle. Seven inches tall, burning an inch an hour. After that, it's guesswork. Has this fossil ever been contaminated? Has, what was the, how much carbon-14 was in the atmosphere when that plant was alive? You can't know that. So you're taking today's carbon-14 concentration, 0.00026% or whatever it is, and, and assuming that that's what it was back then. You can't possibly know that. Tell you what, take me to a court of law. Let's have an honest judge and some, the jury. You, you, just, you say, I think carbon dating is accurate. I'll show the obvious assumptions. And any, any honest judge would say, folks, we don't know the age of anything by any of these carbon, by radiometric dating methods. No, nobody, you can't tell. There's too many assumptions involved. Throw it out. Well, there are, uh, you can cross-reference with uh, radiometric dating methods and uh, like use several methods like, uh, you know, and they all come out cross-referenced. They come out to around a few percent of the same age. So I think that's just an incredible coincidence. Well, I disagree with that with that statement. They cross-reference the radiometric dating with what? Oh, the radiometric dating methods. Here. Here's a rock. How old is this rock? 
You can't tell from just looking at it. Bingo. Can't tell. You'd have to make some assumptions. If you take a fossil, take this clam, petrified, closed clam, to any university and say, how old is it? Their first question will be, where did you find it? What difference does it make where I found it? I want to know how old it is. They say, oh, we have to know where you found it so we can give it a geologic age based upon the geologic column. See, the layers of the Earth, this geologic column, which does not exist, those layers are dated by the fossils they contain. And the fossils are dated by the layer they're found in. Complete circular reasoning. Your Honor, throw it all out. Baloney. Honest judge? Yep, you're right. Can't use that evidence. Fossils are fossils. Petrified clams are found by the probably by the trillions, and they're closed. I think it indicates they were buried quickly, buried alive. Well, if my theory is correct and the flood formed all this, the water coming up from Noah's flood and rushing in to fill the bump would bring in a layer of mud 50 feet thick in 10 seconds and would bury the clam beds alive. Why are petrified closed clams found on top of Mount Everest and on top of most of many of the mountains around the world? I can answer that. The Bible's true. The flood did it. So there's no such thing as a geologic column. There's no other, no other way to collab, uh, corroborate the, the age of the rocks or fossils. Radiometric dating has real obvious assumptions. You can't throw that out. So even if, the, even if the bones you found were X number of thousand or million years old, you still don't know they had any children that lived or that were different than themselves. No farmer's ever seen this, Jackson, nobody. It's not observable, it's not science. Science, what we can observe, study, test, demonstrate. Evolution is not science in any stretch of the imagination. Well, I can answer why there are clams on the top of the Mount Everest. Uh, it's plate tectonics. It's not necessarily a global flood. So there are two explanations for that that work just fine, if you, depending on the way you look at it, I guess. But uh, well, that, that, that's not an explanation. That's a possible, a possible explanation. I agree the mountains are lifting up. I agree the plate tectonics, the Earth's crust is moving. I agree. I don't, I've never said, and I won't say, that the water was over Mount Everest during Noah's flood. Mount Everest was not there. Psalm 104 says at the end of the flood, the mountains arose, the valley sank down, the water rushed off. So at the end of the flood, the liquid covered planet got rearranged by crust, crustal movement and the crust of the Earth is still moving around. I taught her science 15 years. There's major fault lines everywhere. San Andreas Fault, Hayward Fault, New Madrid Fault. None of them are my fault, but I've studied them, been there, looked at them. No question. That, but that doesn't prove it's been going on for millions of years. Rapid plate tectonics can happen where the crust a section of the Earth the size of Texas can tilt half a mile. The water's going to run off and make an ocean here and mountain range here. That's, I think, all the mountain ranges in the world follow the coastlines. Might not be just a coincidence. Might be. Maybe there was a flood. So I, I think you're finding these fossils. The argument tonight, the debate tonight is about human evolution. My position is there is no of evidence of any animal ever producing anything that was more human than itself. Dogs produce dogs. Cows produce cows. Cows. But any evidence of anything other than that, these fossils you're finding, or at least you're arranging in some kind of order, would not count as evidence at all anywhere. Not an honest court of law, anyway. Go ahead. Well, you know, uh, kind of lost my train of thought. Well, we can take questions. What were you the saying again? I'm saying there is no evidence of any animal or plant producing anything other than its kind. So, for you to say these fossils they found could do that okay. is a religious belief on your part. We don't observe cows today produce non-cows or even 2% better cows. I mean, it's cow all the way, 100%. So you're, you're arranging these fossils is not part of science. It's part of a religious prejudice. Of course, nothing ever gave birth to something else, but each generation does have slightly different genetics. I mean, each there's variation in the genome. There's, uh, I mean, you, you know, you have slight changes over one generation, look down, you know, a million generations, and what do you think it's going to look like? All right. We have watched hundreds of generations of humans. People have observed it, and they're always human. We have, we have been able in the laboratory to watch m probably millions of generations of bacteria because they have People a generation people. time of 20 minutes. They get born, grow up, get married, and have kids in 20 minutes. So you can watch bacteria over 
thousands, certainly hundreds of thousands of generations, and they always produce bacteria. Nothing else ever than a bacteria. Where are the two-celled, three-celled, four-celled organisms, and where is the evidence of any creature, bacteria to whale, producing something other than its kind? For you to say, oh, it happens slowly over generations, that's a religious belief, Jackson. You don't see that. That's not science. Sorry. Well, I forget what the actual experiment's called, but the experiments with E. coli, and there are six cultures, I believe, I may be wrong about that, they uh, are raising up and have been watching for thousands of generations. They think that one may be a uh, different species now. They're not 100% sure on that, but uh, one of them metabolizes some enzyme that the other ones can't. I forget what it is exactly, the details, but uh, yeah, they're, they're not the same as when they began. So somebody's calling it a different species. <clears throat> well, a dog and a wolf are different species, but they're the same kind of animal, okay? The Bible uses the word kind 20 times in the first seven chapters, 10 times in the first chapter. So God said they'll bring forth after their kind. Uh, is this creature you're talking about still this, would, would a fourth grader or four-year-old still recall it the same kind? The fact that it's now able to metabolize some enzyme, so? I don't like onions. My wife does. What does that prove? Nothing. Both still human. So I think the changes, you, you guys are desperately looking for any kind of evidence to support your theory that you already chose. You want to believe this. You want to believe that Jesus was lying when he said Adam was the first man. You really want to call him a liar. That's my guess. Go ahead. Well, uh, I don't feel any way about... Uh... Jesus as a person, I think he had some good teachings. Uh, I'm not looking to make him a liar. I just think what's in the Bible is not literally true. Uh-huh. And, and but that's that was my point. You don't want the Bible to be to be literally true for whatever reason. And so you've chosen to believe, capital B, believe, this evolution story that they're telling. Well, that's fine. But I wish you guys would admit it's a religious belief and a choice on your part instead of calling it science when it's not. Well, when multiple religions accept evolution, how do you have two religions? I mean, that doesn't really make any sense. You can't be, well, I mean, Catholics accept evolution. How are you a Catholic and an evolutionist if evolution is a religion? A religion is something people believe in without scientific evidence to support it would be a, a ge rough general uh, uh, definition. Nobody's ever seen a cow produce a non-cow, but you believe a cow came from a bacteria. What the charts show, I can show you again if you like, they show this, all of us came from a single cell creature. I say that, you that's not science. 8998, Alt DB. Do you believe this chart from the textbook? I forgot to put the lot the tech which textbook it came from. Do you believe this is accurate? That a single celled ancestor is the ancestor of everything alive today. Starfish, grasshoppers, worms, mollusks. Do you, do you believe do you believe that chart is represents scientific evidence or is that a religious belief? Well, the chart is kind of uh, an oversimplification, but uh, yes, I, we did uh, come from a single-celled organism. Okay, where is the evidence of any single-celled organism producing anything other than a single-celled organism? We've watched bacteria they, for they recently, tens of thousands of generations. They didn't work. Didn't work. They're still bacteria. Recently, Sorry, they recently found a uh, fossil of uh, Bicellum braceri, I think it's called, which is uh, the first multicellular organism ever found in the fossil record, about a billion years old. It has two types of differentiated cells, the first step up from what would be called a single-celled organism. So... Uh, Hold it, if you, Jackson, you're, if you found a fossil, you don't know that it's related to the single-celled organism. You don't know that it produced anything other than its kind. Let's do this in the laboratory. Get a bunch of single-celled organisms. You can use amoeba, paramecium, bacteria, whatever you want to use, and turn it to something else. They've even tried with all kinds of things to turn it to something else, and it won't do it. So it's not science. That's all. Well, creations didn't used to accept speciation until we proved it beyond the shadow of a doubt. But, uh, wait, wait. I, I'm sorry to hear that part. You proved what beyond uh, the shadow of a doubt? Speciation. 
Well, I would, I would not use the word species. I'd use the word kind. Like I said, a dog and a wolf are a different species. They're the same kind of animal. Show me something. It's just because some scientist decided, oh, this is far enough different than the original. We're going to call it a new species. They can no longer interbreed like the sparrows around the north uh, polar region. The sparrows in Russia cannot interbreed with the sparrows in Alaska. Or they normally don't interbreed. They probably could if you, you know, if they, they've got desperate. But they're still sparrow. That's the ring species. They say at the extension of the ring species, they cannot interbreed. So it's still the same kind. Darwin saw 14 varieties of finches on the Galapagos Islands. They're still a finch, Charlie, a bird. That's not evidence for any evolution. But you guys are so desperate for evidence, you'll jump on anything like that. So the fact that somebody decided to call it a new species, I don't care. It's still the same kind. Show me something. This, this chart shows single-celled ancestor turning into everything today. Wow. Well, where's the science? Do that in a laboratory. I don't want to see a fossil. That doesn't mean anything. Where's, where's it happening today? Well, where do we draw the line at kind? Is it a family, genus? Where is it? King Philip came over for Girl Scouts. Kingdom phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Go ahead. Right, but where do we draw the line? Oh, I don't know. At where um, I don't think anybody knows. There's not a good definition of species that's airtight either. That's what exactly true. do you mean by species? Dog and a wolf are different species, but they're interfertile. So they can't use that. Uh, dog, wolf, coyote, uh, hyena might have all had a common ancestor. Still look like a dog. That's not proof that dogs are related to bananas. Let me jump in here real quick, gentlemen. Um, we've got about one minute left on the uh, discussion portion, plus hundreds of questions. <laughs> but Jackson, I don't want to cut you off. So J Jackson, make, um, I, I guess, your final point there. And, uh, and we'll kind of go from there. We'll, we'll start winding it down, move into the closings in, in just a minute. Go ahead, Jackson. Honestly, I forgot what I was going to say. You can go ahead. Okay. Okay. Great discussion, uh, gentlemen. Time's flying by. Uh, we've got a great audience, over 300 people with a ton of great questions all pertaining to the topic. Uh, but just so we can wrap up our thoughts, wrap up uh, final points, address anything that we feel might be uh, left hanging, let's do a five-minute closing statement. Jackson, since you were the affirmative and you started us off in this uh, in this debate, let's hand it to you. You've got five minutes for a closing statement, and then we'll hand it to Kent for his five-minute closing statement. All right. I feel like this uh, debate kind of... Uh went on a tangent a few times. We've been talking a lot about theology and about unrelated stuff. But uh, uh, just basically, I feel it went pretty well. I mean, I, I'm not going to call myself a winner. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to call Ken, Ken Hoven a winner. Uh, uh, I'm biased. I don't know who won. It's for the audience to decide. But I'm just going to say, uh, go back over some of what Kent said. I think it's possible to believe in evolution and be a Christian. Uh, we're still apes. I mean, there, there's not a half ape or a half man. Uh, a lot of what Kent spoke of were oversimplifications or misrepresentations. Uh, you know, there's no such thing as a fully human or a fully ape. Uh, Neanderthals, for, uh, he mentioned that and I didn't really get to respond. We differ by them by 202 mitochondrial base pairs. So we are not, not the same species. He was talking about uh, Neanderthal brow ridges indicating their old age. But even young Neanderthals had uh, highly pronounced brow ridges. Uh, and we can tell they were young because they're either very small or they had very low amount of wear on their teeth. But uh, that's pretty much all I want to address. I think the debate went pretty well. I think, I mean, I had fun, uh, regardless of the outcome. So uh, I'll hand it over to Ken. All right. Thank you, Jackson, for that closing statement. Uh, just looking at the questions that we've got saved, we're going to have an awesome audience Q&A. Uh, so Kent, we're going to hand it over to you. Uh, brother, you've got five minutes for a closing statement whenever you're ready. 
Well, thank you. Uh, his, his statement that I used oversimplifications and misrepresentation, let me translate that for the average audience. That means he's claiming I lied. Okay, He's claiming the same thing about Jesus, that Jesus lied. God said in the beginning, he created the heaven and the earth. Jackson thinks he lied about that. That was that God didn't do it. Uh, in the beginning was the word. Jesus was the word. Jesus created all things. We talked about that. Jesus answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Was that a misrepresentation? Was God lying? Was he oversimplify it? No, it's the truth. My position is very clear. The Bible is scientifically accurate. It is the correct way of how we got here. There's no logical explanation for how the world got here to begin with, how life got started, and how all these different varieties came about. God created them. And they've been, ever since he made them, they've been producing after their kind. They've been making a lot of variations. There's now you know, several different colors of humans, but they're still human. Some have curly hair. Some have straight hair. They're still hair. No, none of them grow in feathers. So I think the evidence shows clearly that, like Jesus said, the begin from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. He didn't. That's not misrepresentation. That, that's a, that's how it happened. So my my position is just like I started. I think the Bible is true. God made the world in six days. It was destroyed by a flood. And the scoffers in the last day. Let's see, slide number nine seventy one here. The scoffers in the last days are ignorant of the creation, the flood, and the coming judgment of God. I would be very concerned for Jackson or anyone who takes his position when you die and have to stand before God. And he's going to say, look, I wrote it in a book and millions of people died over the centuries so you could have a copy of that book in your hand. Why didn't you believe it? It's very simple. God created the heaven and the earth. And God made life. God made breathed into the dust and made Adam come alive. I think God can take dirt and make a human. I don't think dirt can make a human out of it by itself. I think man can take metal out of the ground and make a car. I don't think the ground metal in the ground can make a car by itself. So my position is the same. Jesus made everything. And I accepted him as my savior 53 years ago, and I'm going to heaven. Not that I deserve it, but I'm going because I'm forgiven. I'd like you all to watch it to get forgiven and go to heaven with me. Go ahead, brother. That's it. All right, brother. Thank you for that concluding statement. And... Final words. Uh, fantastic debate. Time really flies by. We've had a great audience. Jackson as well. Thank you so much for your uh, concluding statements. Uh, Matt, as well, you're a blessing, brother, because I know that chat was wild and uh, you did a great job saving, uh, you know, these hundreds of questions. So we'll get through as many as we can. Um, so I apologize ahead of time if if we don't get to your question. Now, what we do on this channel uh, is whoever the question is for, Okay, they obviously get to respond first, but then we're going to give the other debater a chance to respond and, and add their thoughts. Uh, in order to move along smoothly, what we'll do is we'll give the uh, whoever got the question, they get the last word. So that being said, Matt, since you uh, saved the questions, we can take turns kind of asking them, but I'll let you uh, pick the first question. Um, okay. Okay. Um, I will be doing all the super chats. I think there was about nine or 10 of them there. So I just kind of went in order as much as I could with the first one being from logical, probable, possible. And it is for both of you. If dogs always produce dogs and cats always produce cats, why do some human theists manage to produce atheists? Is this proof of evolution perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, question for Kent, I guess, first, <laughs> or, or Jackson, whoever wants to take it, really. <laughs> uh, I'll be glad to take it. Uh, okay. Yeah, some human Christians produce atheist children. I think you, uh, anybody with a brain would categorize their body as still human. Uh, they may have devolved in their brain to where they believe they came from a rock a little bit, but uh, their, their body is still 100% human. All right, Jackson. Oh, uh, actually, Jackson, you might be muted. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, any demographic can produce any other demographic of people. I mean, you know, Muslim can give birth to an atheist. Well, not everyone's born an atheist, technically. They uh, become an atheist later in life. Uh, or, you know, an atheist family can have a child that becomes a Muslim, you know? It's... Just how it goes. It just depends on what that individual sees as true. I guess it's really up to them. All right. Um, 
SFT, did you want to ask the next one? I'll just erase it from mine if you wanted to just choose one. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah, let me... Um... I'm just picking questions at random since we've got a ton here. So this one comes in from Dwayne Burke. I appreciate the uh, super chat, Dwayne Burke. Um, he says, so I guess, uh, again, it's a question for both. He says, fossils are not evidence of transitioning animals because the fossils could be A, a pre-existing kind of animal, or B, an undiscovered kind of animal. Um, it seems like it's kind of more directed at you, Jackson. So let's start with you on that one. All right. Well, again, we're back to kinds and what that means. But uh, you know, there are some transitions that are so obvious between a couple of different uh, lineages. But it seems that uh, there's really no other explanation. Like uh, myocetus and the whale... And the land, the sea transition for whales. There's uh, there's so many features. Its head is basically that of a basilosaurus, but its body is that of a basically fully land animal. And there just aren't really a lot of uh, explanations for animals like that. All right, go ahead, Kent. Well, I think the question was uh, well well worded, if I understand what he said, but. Yes, if you find a fossil that is looked to be halfway between one and another, like Jackson said, halfway between a whale and something else. Okay, we find a fossil that's halfway between by somebody's definition. It could be an animal that's gone extinct that never was half that wasn't changing anything else. Uh, is a bicycle halfway between a unicycle and a tricycle? No, it's a bicycle. It's designed to be a bicycle. It has two wheels. So. If there were a fossil found that somebody wants to say, oh, this is halfway transition from this to this, that's it all done, all happening in their imagination because they lined them up into, to change from one to another. We never see any animal change to another kind of animal. Whales have baby whales every time, every time, no exception. Whales came from whale mom and dad. I bet their grandparents were whales too. I bet you can go way back as far as you want. It's a whale. Now, if you wish to imagine that it was something else, you're outside of science at that point. So I think you're right. If, if you found a fossil that looked to be exactly 50% halfway between two different creatures, you could not prove it wasn't just an extinct animal just recently now discovered by this fossil. Good question. All right. I appreciate that uh, answer, Jackson and Kent. Since I guess it was kind of directed at both of you, why don't we um, uh, hand it to Matt? Matt, go ahead and pick the next question. All right. Um, it will be just a random statement because it was super chat. It will be from logical, probable, possible again. He said the after show will be on his channel. There will be a link in the description box and a question from George Bond for Jackson. How does a caterpillar without sexual organs create a butterfly in small incremental steps? What's well, uh, one individual uh, metamorpho metamorphosing into something else? It's not really a, evolution or creation it's so i don't really understand what the point they're making is okay we could just move on to another one um unless yeah. kent if you wanted to add anything i think the butterfly is designed and is amazing i praise god for the butterfly and the moth and the fact that they can come from a caterpillar i think is just god did that kind of stuff just so someday he can get the evolutionists up in front and say guys you should have listened the evidence for intelligent designer is everywhere. For a caterpillar to turn to a butterfly is amazing. I mean, stunning. I don't have a problem giving God the glory. I don't have to look for some stupid explanation for how it came from a rock. I just say, God made butterflies, did a good job. Um, Jackson, unless you wanted a final word since it was your question, and then we can, uh, we'll have Matt pick the next one. Well, I think it's amazing too. I just, you know, have a different view on the, what it means, I guess. Okay, go ahead, Matt. Next question, brother. All right. Um, uh, super chat for Kent then. Um, um, Cedric Sa uh, Saunders. It is, I would like to have a debate with you on the veracity of the Inca stones depicting non-avian dinosaurs cohabited with man. If you're game, I'll send you my contact info. 
If I understood what you're saying, he, he wants to have a debate on the Ica stones. Is that what he said? Correct. Okay. Well, I have a, or had, they're in Pensacola now, eight of the Ica stones. Uh, there are thousands have been found. Ica Peru is what they're talking about, I-C-A. Uh, many books have been written on the topic, and they certainly, many of these stones seem to clearly depict dinosaurs and humans together. But we don't need those stones. If the Bible is correct that man brought death into the world, nothing died till Adam sinned. Dinosaurs had to live with Adam and Eve. God said he made everything in six days. Everything. Dinosaurs had to live with Adam and Eve. Nothing died before man sinned. So reptiles never stopped growing. Never. And it's very clear from the Bible, at least, that before the flood came, people lived to be 900 years old. I mean, that's what the book says. You can read Genesis chapter 5. So if you take an animal like a reptile that never stops growing and let him live to be 900 years old, it's going to be a dinosaur. Slide number 1062. Hang on. Alt DB 1062. I like PowerPoint. Okay. So this is a, that from the Bible. Adam will live to be 930. Everybody before the flood's living 900 years. So the Christian perspective is dinosaurs lived from Adam up until the flood. Noah would have taken dinosaurs on the ark, probably babies. Just be sure to get a pink one and a blue one. And after the flood, when lifespans dropped off, this was problematic for the creatures for the, that they can't live as long now. Some probably went extinct because they couldn't even live long enough to reach maturity. And so probably the big ones, you know, died off within the you know, couple hundred years of me, you know, right away after the flood. So to find dinosaurs carved on rocks and stories of people living with dragons, I covered that for three or two hours on my video number three all about dinosaurs that lived with man. So my position is dinosaurs lived with Adam and Eve. Whether Ica stones are accurate or not, I think they are, but it really wouldn't matter because there's so much other evidence. There might even be some dinosaurs alive today. There have been thousands of sightings of creatures like Mokali and Bembi in the Congo swamp. Uh, that it, certainly the natives, you show the natives over there a dinosaur who've never been to school to study evolution and say, what is this? That's, oh, Mokali and Bembi. Don't get close. He's not friendly. Just watch my video number three. I cover all that. So I do believe the Ica stones are correct and accurate. Some probably have been fakes and frauds. I mean, there's there's fake hundred dollar bills too. Doesn't prove they're all, well. I guess those are all fake, but never mind. That's a different story. Okay. All right. Thank you, Kent um, Jackson. If you wanted a quick response or add anything, uh, go ahead. All right. Well, the, the man who discovered the Ica stones, or some of the Ica stones anyway, admitted that some of them at least were frauds. And uh, even Answers in Genesis doesn't use those anymore. And uh, talking about Nokili and Bembe, uh, I saw a video of uh, uh, some pygmies in the, in, the, in the area shown a picture of a rhino, and they said that's Nokili and Bembe. So I don't think they really know what Nokili and Bembe is. I think if they see an elephant, they'll say that's Nokili and Bembe. If they see a lion, rhino, they'll say that's Nokili and Bembe. I mean... I don't think it necessarily means the brachiosaurus. Thank you, Jackson. Uh, Kent, question was for you. Uh, you get the last word. Yeah, I don't. I don't work for AIG. Probably a good thing. They'd fire me, but I, I do believe that Ica stones are legitimate. And I think, but it, again, it, it's irrelevant to the discussion. The Bible says clearly, <clears throat> man, God made everything in six days. If dinosaurs lived before man, millions of years before man then clearly that's causing calling the Bible a lie. And Jesus said the creation of Adam was the beginning. So they're calling Jesus a liar. So you can't have both. You can't say, oh, I believe the Bible and I believe dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. The dinosaurs lived with man. They just called them different names. The word dinosaur wasn't made up till 1841 by in uh, Richard Owen, in uh, meaning terrible lizard, terrible reptile. All right, thank you, Kent. Matt, go ahead, pick All the right, next question. Super Super chat for you, standing for truth. <laughs> well, uh, can you bring on Dr. Stephen Meyer? Stephen Meyer, sure. Yeah. Sure, we'll uh, we'll reach out. That'd be a ton of fun. Um, go ahead. Uh, another one for you. Does Matt Powell have any upcoming debates? We are working on a couple. Um, nothing official yet. So I recommend his debate with Dr. Kenny Rhodes, uh, which I think was about a month ago, if anyone's interested. Okay. Uh, another question, I guess it'll be for both of you, but it's directed at Jackson. Are you willing to admit that you put your faith strictly in evolutionary professors and reject those PhDs who disagree with them in favor of young earth creation? 
Well, there are very few PhDs who disagree with them, but uh, I mean, yeah, uh, I don't really put faith in anyone. I, I look at the evidence myself, and it looks legitimate. I'll I'll say it looks legitimate. If it doesn't, I'll admit it and say this looks kind of silly. So that's basically my answer to that. I don't, I'm not following people like they're priests or something. So. Okay. And that would be really hard for uh, Ken to answer. So I think I should go on to the next one. because. Uh, well, no, no. I, I got to, one comment on that. Okay. Uh, the nation of China has about three times, four times as many people as we do. Okay. It's huge. I, and they teach communism in their school system exclusively. Communism is good. That's the only system they teach. I think all of the doctors and PhDs and uh, even you know postdoctoral students and professors in China would teach communism's good. Therefore, does that make communism good because the majority believe it or because all the peer-reviewed articles in China glorify communism and say capitalism is bad? The fact that many PhDs in America accept evolution is immaterial, doesn't matter. The fact that all the PhDs in Muslim countries teach Islam is wonderful. That doesn't make it true. It just proves they got control of the system. That's all. So the fact that the atheists and evolutionists have current current control of our education system doesn't make it true. It just means they got majority opinion. That's all. Okay. Um, another super chat then. This one was from the person to a person who challenged you to a debate. Kent, this is um, uh, why are you interrupting Jackson? The your your debates are supposed to be on one topic at a time without interruptions. Are you violating your own rules? I, I well, I'm going to jump in there real quick. I don't think uh, there was any interruptions. Uh, let, let's be careful to not ask. It, it seemed because we have such a big audience. There's a lot of questions that'll come in that are just not relevant to it uh, i thought the the discussion went cordial of course kent um if he's coming at you feel free f feel free to respond but matt let's make sure we get to uh questions that are uh, kind of related to the topic uh, the most important ones these were yeah, time ahead, this isn't a time back and forth this is a debate i just thought that was funny he's angry but uh okay next well one. go ahead let kent respond if he wants but yeah let's yeah. let's do our best to get to the important questions mm -hmm. Well, I think the uh, one that asked the question is scratching the bottom of the barrel. They're desperate to find something to put on me because they certainly can't uh, argue with the logic. Dogs produce dogs without exception. Fossils don't count at all. You can't argue with that. So let's say he interrupted. OK, well, move on. <laughs> it, it sounds like he's just triggered or angry for exactly some right. Um, OK, Matt, let, let's choose a good question pertaining to the topic. I know we got 100 there. So, yeah, we got a lot more. Um, Stacy Flores, uh, another super chat. I, they didn't say who this was for, but I believe it was for Jackson. Since evolution is always seemingly improving organisms, like their chart shows, why, what are humans going to evolve into? Are we improving? And what is the evidence? It's not necessarily improving, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, just, Sent with modification, you know. Uh, we are still evolving. I mean, anything that continues to have offspring is going to evolve. But uh, what we're evolving into is, you know, impossible to say. Uh, I mean, you really can't look into the future, you know. Right. Ken, do you have anything to say on, on that one? I think that's ludicrous what he said. And anything with offspring is going to evolve. This shows his incredible faith and his brainwashing program that he swallowed hook, line, and sinker. Nothing that produces offspring is going to evolve. Grass produces grass, cows produce cows, dogs produce dogs. It doesn't happen, Jackson. You're dreaming. Sorry they brainwashed you. All right. Now we're going to drop into no more super chats. Now we just have a whole list to go through. Jackson, you got a ton. So we're going to go back and forth for a little while. And then I just run out of questions for Kent and <laughs> Jackson, you've got the floor after that. So first one for Jackson uh, from S Fred Smith, considering all the necessary parts for a living cell to exist at the same time, how did evolution ever get its start? Well, cells used to be much more simple, like cyanobacteria. They're much more simple than, say, E. coli bacteria. And uh, the fossil record shows uh, 
organisms like cyanobacteria were first. Uh, but uh, yeah, a cell is complex, but the organelles, uh, for example, mitochondria and chloroplasts evidently were not always part of our cells. They uh, formed a symbiotic relationship with, with our cells uh, hundreds of millions of years ago to uh, form what our cells are today. So, I mean, you can, you can laugh at that, but that's what the evidence shows. So that's really all I have to say. Okay. All right, go ahead, Ken. A single cell is more complicated than the space shuttle. There is no such thing as a simple life form. If it's alive, it's complicated. If it's able to reproduce, it's really complicated. So I just, this is, what he demonstrated was clearly a religious belief that he holds to and an example of the brainwashing he succumbed to. And there is no such thing as a simple life form. There is no evidence of any single cell, multi-cell, plant, animal, anything ever producing other than its kind. Exactly what God said would happen. All right. Jackson, that was your question. You get the last word. Go ahead. Uh, well, I think... Uh... It's a borderline ad hominem to say I'm brainwashed or I'm, uh, you know, something like along those lines. I think uh, it's gone a little bit too far, but whatever. It's, it's, I mean, yeah, that's really all I have to say. Okay. Um, question for Kent Why can't God create creatures that evolve? Oh, I'm sure he could. He didn't, though. <laughs> Good one. All right. Um, Jackson, anything to comment? Uh, not really. It was kind of a funny comment. Yeah, that was a good one. All right. Uh, question for you then, Jackson. Uh, can mitochondrial Eve be traced to apes? Well, we're considering we're still an ape. Uh, yes, I guess is my answer. Okay. Kent? Similar short answer. <laughs> well, for him to say we are still an ape, I guess he can speak for himself. I am not, never have been. Uh, I'm human. All right. Um, question for, wait, who was that one for? Okay, that was for Jackson. So Dr. Dino, um, question for Dr. Dino by Saved by Grace. Kind of... Um, off the topic of human evolution, but it says gas giants, planets like Jupiter and Saturn, radiate more energy than the planets receive from the sun. Is this powerful evidence for a recent origin? There are thousands of lines of evidence that would lead us to believe the universe cannot possibly be billions of years old. If I told you this ink pen was 4,000 years old, I think you could quickly prove I was wrong because the ballpoint mechanism wasn't developed until 50 years ago. Oh, good idea. Okay. I think you could quickly prove my 4,000 year age for this ink pen is wrong. I think I could quickly prove the age of the earth that they're claiming 4.6 billion years is wrong. The gas giants that are radiating heat. Uh, Pluto still has warm. I mean, that's way out there. 39 astronomical units away. If you want to call it a planet, I still do. Uh, the moon is getting further from the earth. This, the sun is burning up its fuel. It's burning up 5 million tons a second. You just can't keep doing that forever. You're going to burn up your fuel source. So I, I cover on my video number one quite a few different scientific ways to show this universe cannot possibly be billions of years old. They might need billions of years for them to believe their theory. Okay, you can't have it. It's not available. The, that the gas giants, the guy people are talking about, is, a, is one of hundreds of examples that this universe cannot be billions of years old. Can't be. Jackson, you want to counter that? Uh, yeah, As for the gas giants, they're they're not taking into account radioactive decay in the core and the pressure and the heat they're retaining. So, uh, and for Pluto, Pluto is uh, tidally locked with his moon and Charon, and they kind of circle, like basically circle each other. Charon is so large, and that produces a large amount of uh, tidal heating. 
So that's why Pluto still has some heat to it. And the sun still has a couple billion years of life before uh, it ru starts running out of hydrogen and starts expanding. So uh, that's all I have to say. Well, hey, go ahead. My final word. Quick response. Were these gas giants, including all the other planets, including all the stars, were they all in a dot smaller than a period on a page? That's what evolution teaches. Uh, that's not what evolution teaches. That's uh, more cosmology. But no, that's not. Okay. Uh, hydrogen was the first uh, element to come about. So to say Jupiter was in that dot, it doesn't really make any sense. It was really just energy at first. Yeah. Well, yeah, I agree well, it doesn't yeah, make any sense. But do you, believe, do you believe Jupiter was in that dot that, ex that ex rapidly expanded? I believe the energy that would someday make Jupiter was in that dot. So that little dot, smaller than a period, smaller than a proton, contained all the matter and all the energy to make Jupiter. Is that your position? It contained more energy than matter at that point. Matter uh, kind of came about hydrogen first, then helium, then uh, produced stars, and those formed the heavier elements. That's what is actually taught. I know that's what's taught. I'm saying that's dumb. But go ahead. All right. Well, it's well, not I, what you said. It was I appreciate the back and forth. Matt, uh, a couple super chats just came in. So let me put it up on screen, brother. Sure. And then um, and then we'll get to the next question. So this one comes in from Stacy Flores. I appreciate it. $5 super chat. Questions for you, Jackson. So Stacy says, Jackson, what do you think about evolution and survival of the fittest? And how does this apply to humans? Would this be an invitation to eugenics, survival of the fittest, that is? Um, go ahead, Jackson. Well, the term survival of the fittest was, wasn't really even coined by anyone of significance in the evolutionary theory, but uh, it kind of caught on anyway. But it really, it uh, just means an animal adapted to its environment. It doesn't mean better than other animals. It means or is one human's better than another human because it has some feature. So no, I don't think it's uh, has anything to do with eugenics. All right, I appreciate that, Jackson. Uh, Dr. Holvin, if you wanted to add anything to that or make any points, go ahead. Uh, real quickly, in my video number five called The Dangers of Evolution, this is exactly what I teach, and I believe evolution theory does indeed lead straight to eugenics, the dangers of evolution. That's the one they put me in prison nine years for, for making that DVD. Uh, so, yes, if the survival of the fittest is true, well, then those that are less fit deserve to die. And that goes lead straight to Adolf Hitler. You just decide who is the strongest and best and let's kill the rest of them. The blonde haired, blue eyed Norwegian and German are the best, according to Hitler. So everybody else ought to die. Yes, evolution is the foundation philosophy behind communism, socialism, Marxism, eugenics, abortion lots of what I would call serious evils in this world. It's a philosophy that underlies all of those. It's evil. Go ahead. Thank you, Kent. Uh, Jackson, Super Chat was uh, for you. Uh, you can have a quick final word, and then we'll throw it back to Matt. Matt, you can ask the next question. Well, Hitler says many times he gives credit to God, and then, so I could just easily say he did it because of God, but that would be dishonest. I, I don't think that at all. But uh, that's that's really all I have to say. All right, um, we have a question now for who started that? Was that a question for Jackson? You said yes. Yeah. Okay, so this one will be uh, from Call Me Emo for Kent. If fossils can't be used to show how organisms have changed, why do you use fossils to show how organisms were, for an example, larger in the past? that one was for Ken. so the i can reword it if you like oh, uh, that was for they're saying that was for me yes yeah fossils can't be used to prove anything other than something died i think the very existence of fossils is evidence of a flood how many animals died today in the world millions how many are going to fossilize None. 
Fossilization requires very special conditions, rapid burial, and oftentimes fossils are found completely articulated. All the bones are still in position. I mean, when an animal dies today, the buzzards and the coyotes and the ants haul it all over the place. You don't find it all fully assembled. So the existence of fully articulated fossil skeletons is a clear indication, rapid burial, and the fossils are found by the billions. I think there was a flood that made all, nearly all of them. No fossils are forming today in any significant numbers, if, if at all. So yeah, fossils are great evidence of the flood, not for evolution. All right, let me get to this next question, actually, that came in from Sam Jenkins. Uh, Sam, I appreciate it. Uh, Sam's associated with the creation research team um, of uh, John Mackay, the creation guy, and, and Joseph Hubbard. So uh, I appreciate your support and question, Sam. So this question's for you, uh, Jackson. Um, he asked, what is your answer to the fact that real human footprints, in brackets he puts, proved using imaging analysis, have been found in Cretaceous limestone. And just make sure you unmute yourself, Jackson. All right. I'm not sure what you're referring to, but I would doubt that uh, seriously they've been found in Cretaceous limestone. But uh, so I'm not sure what he's referring to. So I can't really speak much on that. I wouldn't say okay. I doubt it. Kent, did you want to add anything? Well, I think there's no such thing as Cretaceous limestone. I think human footprints are found in multiple layers all over the world, sometimes some really big ones. I mean, really big human footprints indicating what the Bible teaches. Man was living to be uh, nearly a thousand years old and probably was much bigger than we are today. Evolution theory has man starting off small like a chimpanzee and slowly getting bigger, better, stronger, smarter. Bible has man starting off with Adam and Eve, perfect, yes, getting worse and dumber and, and believing we came from a rock. So, yeah, I think that there's no such thing as Cretaceous, and I think human footprints are found in multiple layers. If somebody chooses to call it Cretaceous, they can, but it's, it, human footprints are found in limestone. That's because there was a flood. They were running all over trying to get away from the thing and finally ended up, couldn't swim long enough. All right, I appreciate that. Kent Jackson, question was for you. Go ahead, final word. Well, I think uh, if they've been made in a flood, uh, wouldn't the flood have just wash the footprints away immediately? If uh, I mean, to make these kind of footprints in the limestone, you need uh, soft ground. You need to make the footprint. You need to it needs to dry out. So I don't see how a flood like that could have produced it. Matt, I just put the next question. We're going to start winding it down with the last couple of questions. We are coming up at the hour and 45 minute mark. Uh, great questions from the audience. This has been a ton of fun. I appreciate the super stickers, super chats flying in. Uh, Matt, go ahead. Okay. Uh, question for Jackson from Redefined Living. What is the empirical methodological uh, method? I'm sorry, methodology for establishing ancestral relations with mineralized fossils in the geologic column? Well, it's pretty complicated. You can't just say, and they've reclassified things many times in human evolution because it's not always clear what's leading to what. I was reading something today. They've, they've uh, grouped a couple of species into the same species. Uh, I forget what they called it, but uh, yeah, it's a tangled web. And it's, uh, I'm not going to sit here and say it's uh, very clear, but it, it is apparent that it is, did happen. Ken, did you want to say anything on that one? Uh, no, no comment. Okay. Um, since most of the questions are going to be for Jackson, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kent, I'm going to more pop in for you, but you can still answer. So this one came from Hugh Gadam. Question for, uh, uh, does Jackson think that Aboriginal Australians are closer to apes? No, I don't. That's uh, just a racist idea that people had in the early 20th century, mid 20th century. And no, that's not what anyone thinks today, if you're not a total racist anyway. Okay. Uh, Kent? I think historically it's quite obvious that the evolutionists did use that theory to say the Aborigines were inferior and killed off thousands of them. Yes, in a, well, it's not true. They're not inferior, but that's what the, the theory of evolution leads to, eugenics, to uh, mass murder. It's a philosophy that motivated Hitler and Stalin and all these, you know, 
Yes, it's an evil, evil theory. It's a philosophy that only the strongest have a right to survive. All right. SFT, did you want to uh, just sure, take a question? Sure. Or? Yeah, we'll wind it down with this last question. So uh, we've got a ton of questions to choose from, guys. I want to thank you again for uh, tagging us and sending in your questions. Uh, this has been a great debate, uh, but we got to end it somewhere. And I want to thank, I, I want to respect uh, Kent and Jackson's time. Uh, you know, great endurance from the both of you. So here is the final question that we will get to. This one comes in from Den Tietjen. I hope I said that right. Question for Jackson. Jackson, uh, Den asks you, how can scrambling existing DNA information create a new biochemical pathway or nanomachines with many components in order to make evolution possible? Well, again, it uh, takes many small steps to make a uh, big change. It's not all all at once. So that's what I've been saying this whole debate. Uh, that's that's basically all I have to say. Just many small steps. All right. I appreciate the answer, uh, Doctor Hoven. If you wanted to add anything or make any final points. Yeah, I think there. once once again he demonstrated his faith in a religion that many small steps can do something that nobody's ever observed. Evolution is religion, it's not science. And I've been working hard all day and I'm tired and I've been drinking water for two hours. I'm ready to quit. Go potty. <laughs> all right. I appreciate it. Uh, Jackson, Kent, again, thanks you uh, for your time. And Matt, thank you for being here to gather all of these questions because I, I, I think I would have been lost uh, moderating and gathering the questions too. So final words, final thoughts. Actually, Kent, we'll, we'll, we'll let you uh, get going. And uh, Jackson, again, thank you so much. Uh, Matt, thank you as well. Uh, last thing I'll say before we shut it down, Logical, Plausible, Probable has an open mic after show that is going to take place as soon as this debate ends. So again, God bless. Uh, God bless the audience. And thanks again, Jackson, Matt, right. and Kent. Thank you. Thank you. For thank truth you. is out.